they gave you the most ridiculous looking swim shorts. I mean, they look like dirty boxers that at one point might have been white. Gonzo, the Coast Guard years, boot camp, episode five, sink or swim. Over the next few days in this hell they called Cape May, we were taught how to properly organize our lockers, iron our uniforms, and for some of the recruits, even a lesson on how to shave our face. You were never actually allowed to have stubble on your face unless you had a shaving chit. Chit. I like that word, chit. It actually reminds me of something that my grandmother used to say. You see, my grandmother, when she said chit, she was trying to say the word shit. She had problems with the S-H sound, so she always said chit. Anyway, I just thought that was kind of funny. So you got a shaving chit if you were someone who was prone to getting ingrown hairs in your face or you just had super sensitive skin. The shaving chit basically gave you a license not to shave for a few days. But you got evaluated pretty regularly on whether or not you continued uh, to need a shaving chip. In addition to a shaving chip, which basically is just a piece of paper you kept in your pocket, you also had two other slips of paper that you kept in your shirt pocket. These were two pieces of paper that you never ever wanted to have to take out of your pocket, but almost always you were going to at some point. They were called demerit slips, or at least I think they were called demerit slips. If you got five or six of these things, I mean demerits in a day, you were going to be heading to the evening intensive training, or IT for short. I found myself at IT more times than I really wanted to be. I didn't even know what it was until my first day there. I just knew it was bad. IT happened every night, I think at 8 p.m. It was supposed to be a way to motivate you not to screw up. It was also designed to be a colossal waste of your time. I mean, you didn't get a lot of free time in boot camp. The free time you did had, you used it to study you know, get your uniform ready, or just, you know, take time to breathe. I spent way too many evenings at IT. I spent so much time at IT, I got to join this really super exclusive club known as the IT Ninjas. Being an IT Ninja was not something you really wanted to be associated with. But the upside was I was getting in pretty decent shape after all my nightly visits there. Anyway, I'll be telling you more about IT at some point. So while you're in boot camp, your training gets broken into a bunch of different sections, or a few different sections, not a bunch. You got split into classroom training, which included seamanship training, first aid training, general Coast Guard knowledge, and a few other things I can't remember. You also learn to do some basic firefighting, you also had physical fitness training. And in addition to your physical fitness training, you engaged in a few other drills, like I mentioned previously, the manual at arms. And sometimes they use this physical fitness training as methods of punishment. I'm sure they had another term for it, but it was just punishment for screwing up. These types of things were known as cranking, the punishment training that is cranking. Cranking was what I first learned, or the word, the first week of boot camp. I had no idea what it was, but I quickly found out cranking was bad. Cranking was punishment for being stupid. I was cranked quite often. Our whole company was cranked a lot. But anyway, it wasn't an evolution you wanted to do, but it was pretty common in boot camp. So for physical fitness, one of the things you had to do, and I think it was week two, you had to take the initial swim test. It was this initial swim test where they found out who could really swim and who lied 
on their uh, Coast Guard application or their whatever thing you filled out when you're joining and you sign something saying you actually can swim. We were introduced that morning to this guy who was going to be our physical fitness trainer for the times we were at the gym. Um, he's a big dude. He's like six foot ish tall, big as a house. I mean, he was huge. It was obvious he was a bodybuilder and, and he probably would snap you in half. He was just big. He was like almost Arnold Schwarzenegger big. That's how big he was. But nobody was as big as Arnold in the day. I'm guessing he was in the Coast Guard, but I wasn't sure. I mean, he wore shorts and a t-shirt. So if he was in the Coast Guard, he had a totally different uniform than the rest of us. So let me start by saying that one of the things that they gave you when you were getting your uniforms were they gave you the most ridiculous looking swim shorts. I mean, they look like dirty boxers that at one point might have been white. I mean, these things were terrible. They not only looked bad, but they were sort of translucent. And by translucent, I mean when they got wet, you could see just about every dude's ass cheeks. I didn't want to see some dude's ass cheek. That wasn't something I was interested in seeing at all. The females in our company didn't have it any better. They got these, I think they were black, one-piece swimsuits that were so ridiculously looking. They, they look like something out of a 1940s or 50s movie. I mean, they sort of look like something your grandmother would wear. The, it was, the only thing it was missing was like the, um, like the swim cap or shower cap they put on with the, like maybe like um, a flower on it or something. It was, it was, they were fucking horrible looking. I mean, they were, everything was horrible. Nothing was supposed to be good looking or decent looking. It was just, it was just a fucking mess. Terrible. So anyway, we eventually get to the pool area. And, you know, we're all in one big single file line, and it was um, an Olympic-sized swimming pool. Now, if I recall correctly, there was a pretty sizable platform on one side of the pool, like the one on the long sides of the pool, but towards the deep end. That platform was maybe like three feet over the water, maybe. Then there was another platform at the end, sort of where you expect a diving board to be, but it was a two-level platform. I think one was like six foot, and the other one was maybe 12 foot, maybe 24 feet. I don't remember, but it was a lot higher. Now, one of the, the, the thing for the initial swim test, the goal was to see who would sink or swim. I mean, I had spent a few summers at the beach and didn't think I was going to have a problem, you know, swimming. Up until the point that I heard that it was a 100 meter plus swim. And then you had to tread water for five minutes. You essentially had to go down the length of one side of the pool, turn left at where the ropes are that separate the um, shallow end from the deep end. And just make a big, huge sort of, you know, rectangle, you know, just keep turning left. And then tread water for five minutes at the end. I'd never done anything like that before, but eh, what the, I was going to try it. I mean, I had to, right? While we're lined up, you, you see these guys, like, lurking in the pool. There were, they were Coast Guardsmen. They were petty officers. Who, who came up with that name, petty officer, anyway? I mean... It makes you sound like you're a shitty, whiny person. Petty officer. Anyway, I didn't know what rank they were, but I seem to recall being told they were aviation survival men. Aviation survival men are these crazy-ass bastards whose job it is to jump out of a Coast Guard helicopter, or helo as we called them, and rescue people. I mean, I, I, I gotta tell you, the aviation survival men and the rescue swimmers in the Coast Guard, these dudes are total studs. It, or studettes if they're, if they're women. I don't know if there were. I should probably find out about that. Total studs, though. I mean, there's a few jobs in the Coast Guard that definitely say total badass. 
and being a rescue swimmer or aviation survival man, you were definitely a badass. As a matter of fact, one of my old um, friends from high school ended up joining the Coast Guard a year or so after I did and became an aviation survival man, a rescue swimmer dude, jumping out of helicopters or being lowered out of helicopters and rescuing people and doing stuff that you see, you know, all these uh, Coast Guard documentaries and stuff about and people saving people. That movie, The Guardian, with Kevin Costner and Ashton Kutcher. My friend from high school was, that was one of those dudes. I mean, he wasn't that dude, but it was. But that's what he did. He did cool shit like that. Yeah, that's totally cool. Anyway, badass. So these dudes are swimming in the pool. And the reason they were there, as I'm sure you're probably thinking, is they were there in case someone couldn't swim. I mean, they were there to make sure you didn't drown in boot camp. Not only would that have been just horrible, just, you know, drowning and in, in, in dying in boot camp, that would have been horrible. But it also would have reflected really bad on the Coast Guard being a life-saving service and whatnot if somebody in boot camp drowned in the pool. I just don't know how you'd explain that would be a PR nightmare. Horrible. So our fitness instructor gave us some more instructions. All of which I, I, I don't remember any of them. I don't remember what he said. So I'm pretty sure everything just went in one ear and right out the other. Pretty much like everything else I had done in boot camp. I wasn't really comprehending much. So I just did what everybody else was doing. I mean, that sort of was my mode of operation. So while we're all lined up, we were sort of told that we needed to get onto this, you know, long, wide platform that was on the side and step off the platform when we were told to do so. Swim to the right, go to the rope again that separated the shallow end from the deep end and turn left. Go along the side of the pool, get to the end, go left, go to the other end, go left. But you're not allowed to touch the side of the pool. Touching the side of the pool, you were done. They would, they would make you, they, you would stop, and you'd have to get out of the pool. It seemed pretty simple. So I don't quite remember if there was a whistle, or the guy just yelled, or whatever, but as people got to the platform, I think they were lined up like, you know, um, in rows of four. So we are four abreast. And whatever the signal was, I don't know, like I said, it was a whistle or he said go or whatever. It was, I, I don't remember. People stepped off and started going right. Doing their thing. Going to the shallow end, turning and turning and swimming and coming back. So a few, you know, a few groups of people go. And then there was this guy who, I don't know if he was from Texas. I'm pretty sure he was from Texas because everyone called him Tex or maybe it was Dallas. I, 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 it was one of the two, Tex or Dallas. But for this particular story, we're just going to call him Tex because I'm not calling him Dallas. It reminds me how much I actually hate the Dallas Cowboys. Yes, I know what you're thinking. I'm a damn Washington Redskins fan. Yes, I am. Suck it. Now you see, Tex, I, I, I don't, I don't think he could swim. But that just, I mean, that, that's just a guess of mine. I was, you know, back a few rows so I was able to watch all of this stuff. I don't, I wasn't actually on the platform at the time when all this was going down. I was still on the, the side of the pool, standing there, sort of gawking and looking around. So by the time the instructor said go, and it was Texas' turn to jump, well, he, he, he didn't. He just kind of stood there and looked around and kept shaking his head that basically looked like he was saying, like, no fucking way, I'm not doing that. I mean, it wasn't even a high jump. It was like three feet or something to hit the water. Well, that wasn't going well because, you know, the, the people beside him had jumped and Tex didn't. He was just standing there. I, I remember he had his hands to his side or maybe slightly in front of him, and he just kept shaking his head like, no. So they're trying to encourage him to go into the water, but he's not going. At some point, one of the um, other guys that was there who was sort of helping to supervise 
uh, from the outside of the pool. He grabbed one of those pool poles, you know, the, the kind you use for like maybe, you know, um, picking up stuff in the pool litter or whatever it was. But anyway, he got, he got one of those long ass poles and started moving toward Tex. So he made like that, 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 that threatening motion, like he was going to push him. I mean, I don't think he ever touched him. But at that point, Tex was really starting to shake. He, he was not in a good place. Uh, I don't know if they're shaking because he was cold or that maybe he was starting to panic. I, I, I don't know. But whatever it was, it wasn't looking good. He was holding everybody up, too. And, of course, everybody at this point was looking at him. I mean, the people with the best view besides me were actually the people in the pool who were already treading water and looking at him and going, okay, dude, what's your problem? We're here treading water. We've, we've done all of our part. They're just looking at him and just knowing that Tex is not jumping in. One of the instructors there, or whoever he was, eventually walked up to Tex on the platform. I mean, I don't know what he said to him, but he was talking to him. And then, splash! Tex was in. And Tex went under. Tex did not come up right away. You're wondering or you're thinking, holy shit! Tex sank. He did. Tex went straight down. I mean, it was probably like just 10 seconds or something like that. But if you were Tex, that was like 10 minutes of like sure terror. He came up out of the water. I mean, splashing around. If he hadn't gotten enough attention before, he was totally getting it now. One of the petty officers. There's that word petty officer again that one of the guys in the pool started swimming over to Tex. But Tex started to move. I mean, he sort of looked like a human-sized kraken trying to swat like a zillion flies. I mean, he, he just, it was a sight to see. It was crazy. So Tex had probably moved about 10 feet. Um, sort of swam. I don't know what he was doing. It didn't look good. But he moved to the edge of the pool and was reaching out to grab it. And then the, the guy with the pool pole, that's really hard to say, a pool pole, um, moved over and started yelling at him and making a motion that he was going to like push him back with, 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 with the pole. And basically he's telling Tex, you stay in, don't get out. Oh, I, I, either that or he was trying to defend himself from the cracking that was coming at him. I, fuck, I don't know. I mean, it was, it's funny now, but then it was, it was definitely not a good sign um, uh, to, to see somebody uh, struggling like that. I think at this point it was pretty obvious that Tex was not a very strong swimmer. He said, fuck it. He grabbed the side, and uh, despite the encouragement to stay in, he just said, I'm not having any of that. And he drug himself up onto the side of the pool and sort of eventually made his way over to the bleachers that we had to sit on. At this point, I, any confidence that I thought I had about passing this swim test, well, it was looking pretty rough because he, he had gotten everyone freaked out, including me. But, hey, it seemed like everyone else was doing it. There's no reason why I shouldn't. By the time my turn came up and I was on the platform and there were people beside me, um, I mean, it took me a while to get there because, like before, I was toward the back, uh, all the way in the back, you know thinking I was almost cool, you know, all, all the cool people go to the back. I get to the platform. I remember that I've got my toes on the edge, and I'm waiting, and I'm waiting. The signal comes, and like many times before, just like at the beach, you just kind of jump in, and I jumped in. I popped up like I was supposed to. And did the whole, you know, you kind of look around, get your bearings a little bit, and then I started heading right. And by right, I mean, I went right into the heel of someone else's foot. I, I'm not sure who it was, but I caught someone's foot, like the heel of their foot in my right eye. It reminded me of the time I got hit in the eye by a softball. Except, you know, 
I, I kept on moving. When I'm, I, I think when that softball hit me, I kind of stopped where I was. But in this case, I kept trying to swim. I did not want to end up like Tex or some of the other folks that um, uh, were sitting on the bleachers. I did not want to be a bleacher guy. As it turns out, I was thinking I didn't need both eyes to actually swim. But I heard someone yelling sort of in my general direction. Could have been the pool pole guy or our fitness trainer. I don't know who it was. But I, I, I don't remember initially that they were talking to me or yelling at me. So I just kept on moving. Then it became clear when the pole showed up a few feet in front of my face and I sort of stopped. This guy's yelling at me. He told me to come to the edge of the pool. I mean, when I got there, he, he generally looked like he was concerned. I mean, he asked me, was I okay? And I responded, yeah, I'm okay. I just can't see out of my right eye. That wasn't really the thing that he wanted to hear. He immediately told me to get out of the pool. And it didn't occur to me that getting out of the pool was not a good thing. I mean, I wasn't even sure why he was telling me to get out of the pool. I had been playing goalkeeper and soccer since at least sixth grade. And I had taken more soccer balls to the face, hit in the nose, the eye. I've been kicked in the head. Someone's foot in the right eye wasn't really new to me. But there I was, sitting on the edge of the pool, and the fitness trainer came up, looked at my eye, told me to go sit down. I was told it looked a little red. I mean, I knew it was a little sore, but it, I mean, it was going to be okay. I wasn't really in a position to argue with them, though. So I went and found a spot on the bleachers right next to Tex, and he started to tell me how they pushed him in the water, and he didn't want to go in. And he was, you know, just kind of babbling on about it. I know I remember sort of nodding and telling him that it sucked and, you know, I was really sorry for him, and, you know, and clearly he had it. He could have gotten it, gotten it done. I didn't see any of that shit. Though. I didn't see anybody touch him, but whatever. What I did know, and it was starting to sink in really fast, I was, I was going to be going to remedial swimming. I wasn't even sure what the fuck that was. But I was going to be going to remedial swimming. So the initial swim test is over. Only a few people, including me, were going to be going to remedial swimming. We eventually made our way back to the locker room to change out of our dirty boxers. Tex was telling everyone who would listen what he said really happened. It was a bit more of an embellishment on his part, but let's face it. We were all young, and we didn't want to look like wimps, especially now. I tried to avoid any conversation about what happened to me because it really didn't matter. I got kicked to remedial swimming. Literally kicked. Like in the eye. Seriously, who actually gets kicked in the eye? Me. That's who. Well, we all changed up and at some point ended up back at our barracks, Healy Hall. The other recruits in our squad bay were... Uh, curious and started asking what happened. Embarrassing as it was, I told them. No one seemed to know if it was them or not who kicked me in the face. No one fessed up to it, at least. I do know that before it was all said and done, we were all having a good laugh at my expense. I mean, I was laughing too. It was fine. A few of the recruits that were involved in that sort of discussion, um, I remember them to this day. Um, there was four in particular that I remembered um, from boot camp. I mean, there were more that I remember, but these, these, these four were sort of stuck out the most. There was one guy from Nicaragua. At least that's where his family was from. Um, but he came to the Coast Guard by way of Miami. Then there was another guy, Rafa, the Cuban, who's also from Miami. There were also two other recruits. I don't remember their names um, at all, but they did share a similar trait. They both liked to sing. They did sing different sort of genres of music. 
One was into the oldies. He liked singing that song, Dock of the Bay and Under the Boardwalk. I mean, he sang them a lot. So, from here on out, I'm going to refer to him as Bowser. Bowser is the name of a guy from the TV show, Sha Na Na. If you don't know that show, well, go look it up. Google it. I don't want to embarrass myself by talking about it, but I watched it. The other singer recruit guy, well, he liked alternative rock, which happened to be the kind of music I liked. I mean, he knew tons of songs from The Smiths, The Cure, and of course, R.E.M. I mean, I loved R.E.M. Yeah, most of you probably have no idea who these groups are, but that's okay. It's all right. You don't have to know them, but you can check them out if you like. They're cool. But it also seemed like everyone knew songs by the Eagles, too. I mean, everyone knew the Eagles, right? Oh, and the guy from Nicaragua, he sang, too. I totally forgot. But he was into pop music and liked to sing songs by female artists. There were a few other recruits, too, that um, were sort of listening in this conversation a little bit, and I ended up not really liking these two particular individuals. One was our recruit company commander. I think we just called him an R R the RC and his assistant, who everyone not so affectionately referred to as Little Hitler. I mean, he was not a very tall man. But as it turns out, all it took was a kung fu kick to the face and I started making friends with the other recruits. Nothing like a good heel kick to the eye to break down barriers. You've been listening to Gonzo, the Coast Guard Ears, written and produced by Tim Gonzalez, and I'm Nicholas Gonzalez, the voice guy. Join us Monday for another episode of Gonzo, the Coast Guard